Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum and a good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us again yet in another session of Doctors Go Live via Columbia Asia Facebook. Okay, today, uh, moms and dads especially, this is a topic that would be very interesting to all of you because we're going to be talking about common childhood infectious diseases. Okay, so to have, uh, we have with us today Dr. Hugh Korfan, who is the consultant pediatrician from Columbia Asia Hospital Cheras and he will be introducing the four common diseases, measles, mumps, rubella, and chickenpox, and give us an insight into um, what they are and uh, what are the best ways for us to protect our children from contracting these diseases. Is that right, Doctor? How are you? Yes, yes, yes. how are you? Hi, Sakina. Hi. Fine. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon, Doctor. On behalf of everybody, I'm saying good afternoon to you too. Okay, now we're going to uh, go straight into the topic about infectious childhood diseases. Maybe you can explain to us what are the common types of childhood infectious diseases in Malaysia. Over to you, Doctor. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, there are few commonly seen childhood infection in Malaysia. Uh, of course, the most common one would be uh, viral infection. Okay, this will include your common cold, for example, yeah. uh, cough and cold, uh, your runny nose, uh, sore throat, these are quite common. Yeah. And don't forget dengue. As we are talking about COVID infection, uh, now <clears throat> dengue is just coming back. Okay, yes. so dengue also is endemic in Malaysia. Uh, mm. Besides that, if you send your child to uh, daycare, childcare centers, you would see influenza, okay, which right. happened quite a lot at uh, end of last year. Uh, as well as HFMD, hand foot mouth disease, which is also, also very common. Uh, besides that, less commonly, uh, uh, we would see uh, this measles, mumps, rubella, chickenpox, our topic today. Okay. Uh, this is this, this, this four type of childhood infection uh, mm. is not so commonly seen as of chickenpox or varicella, mainly because uh the coverage by vaccine so a lot of people a lot of children uh, because this this is a uh, mandatory vaccine so uh, most children get covered so we don't see this very common but yeah it is still uh severe it still can cause severe uh, infection it still can cause severe complication uh, from these four diseases okay um which of them are fatal in nature doctor uh, in fact, most of these infections, most of the time are not fatal, but they will be fatal in, if they get complications. Okay, I for see. example, if you get lung infection, you get brain infection, okay, that would be mm. fatal. That's why uh, it is a compulsory vaccine. It is mandatory for all children to get this uh, vaccine. Okay, so I will start my talk by first talking about measles. Okay, okay. measles in Malay called champak. Yeah, mainly marten. Okay, it's a highly transmiss transmissible viral infection. It's an infection caused by measles virus. How does mm -hmm. this uh, measles get transmitted? It is by aerosol. Aerosol uh, means it could be by airborne when you cough or direct contact with a uh, contaminated secretion, yeah. which secretion. For example, your saliva, your sneezing when you sneeze, the virus spread through the air. Okay, incubation yeah. period is about two weeks. What does the incubation period mean? Meaning if uh, a person who is exposed to the virus, measles virus, this measles virus go into your body. So it yeah. takes about two weeks for the symptom to appear. So the first onset of symptom after the exposure, that's called incubation period. Meaning yeah. if you're, you have a person who has measles now, get fever, get rash. So probably he he or she has the inf has reinfected about two weeks ago. Okay, so it is a highly communicable disease and uh, it can occur from four days before and four days after the appearance of fresh. Mm. It's very infectious. The infectivity okay. needs to be almost 90%. Meaning if a person is exposed to the measles virus, nine out of ten possible get the infection so it's very infectious it's much more infectious than the COVID-19 okay oh 
Uh, usually, usually this uh, Mrs. Correction, they will present with a uh, very non-specific symptom, for example, fever, cough, flu. These yeah. are very common. But after that, you followed by a skin rash, okay? And very often, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the young child, you see red eye, uh, conjunctivitis. Yeah. Right. Uh, complex spot, difficult to see. It's a spot inside the mouth, it's quite difficult to see. But more commonly, we see a high fever, a child who is miserable, with rashes, poor feeding, probably vomiting. Okay. Okay. Uh, Doctor, sorry, uh, what you, when you say incubation period, that that is a time when there is no, there are no symptoms at all. Yes, when the virus goes to your body, uh, the virus multiplies your body, but your body has not developed any symptom yet. So it depends on the infection. The infection incubation period is very short, for example, then the a certain infection incubation period is very long. For example, chicken pox, it can be up to three weeks. We are, if we are talking about COVID, COVID-19 infection, uh, average within a week, five days or a week, you get the symptom. But some people, they will only develop symptom after about two weeks. Although it's not so yes. common, but it can be yeah. up to about two weeks. That's why yeah, you yeah. need to go yeah, for up to two weeks. That's the reason. Mm. Okay, okay, look at this picture on the left. How do we describe a child who has measles? They get red eye, a bit tearing, rashes on the body, on the face, on the body. And the looks is miserable, look, a bit miserable. So measles is an infection by a viruses. Uh, measles is a viral infection. It can, it can cause uh, several uh, complications. Okay, if you look at this, uh, the characteristic the virus go into the body by droplet or touching contaminated surface okay, okay. and then it grew in the cell inside the throat and also it can go to the lung symptoms appear after about 10 to 12 days mm -hmm. for about when fever lasts for about two to four days the infected person get cough flu watery eye red eye okay and then the rash appear after that so it start usually start from the face the neck and then it spread downwards to the body, to the hand and feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, as mentioned before, the virus can be transmitted for about four days before and after four days after the appearance of rash. Okay, doctor. The characteristics of uh, measles is there anything that is uh, that is exclusive to measles? That means when parents see this, they know for a fact it's hundred percent measles. It's oh, not. It's really, really, really difficult. Uh, as oh. the earlier. There's one, uh, as my earlier slide, slide shows, coptic spot. Okay, coptic spot, if you're not a doctor, you're not a medical professional, it's very difficult for you to identify, okay? If you see the coptic spot, you can say, oh, this is, for sure, this is a uh, missus, okay? But from the outside, the appearance, the rash, the fever, cough, flu, fever, some of the, most of the viral infection, they have this kind of presentation. Yeah. So, correct. Mm. But generally, misses in children, they are a bit miserable looking. Quite miserable. <laughs> this is the, the, the rash. We call it a maculopapular rash, the red, red dot uh, involving the whole body. And it may start from the face, from the neck, go downward to the body, to the hand, to the feet. Generalized rashes. Hmm. What about inside the cavities, like uh, in the mouth? Yeah, they may get a bit of sore throat, yeah. a mouth ulcer, oh. possible flu, runny nose. Uh, hmm. But some they because of fever, they are not well. They have very poor appetite. They may get vomiting. Uh, become not active. So if any children has this kind of rash with fever, especially high fever, yeah. poor feeding, uh, not active, you probably need to bring over to the hospital or clinic. Uh, right. get treatment. Okay, what, okay. what are the complications? As I mentioned before, uh, this, this, all this infection, okay, it can cause severe mm -hmm. complications, especially in children. Especially for yeah. those children who are not vaccinated or not vaccinated, are not immunized against uh, this infection. Okay, yeah. uh, example, opportunity infection. Because the infection caused the immune system to to do they, they reduce the, uh, the function of the immune system so they are more susceptible to other infection okay right. on top of the breathing okay the respiratory tract they get ear infection 
it can get so called group or strategies that means the infection in the upper airway. Okay, they can okay. get even lower infection, which is pneumonia. Uh, it can be fatal in oh. And another important complication is to the brain. They can get brain infection. The child can get fit, fibro fit or fibro compulsion. Okay, power problem. Very common children get fever, uh, viral infection. They get diarrhea. Okay, uh, a small number of them get infection to the liver, hepatitis, and also pancreas, hepatitis. And as I shown in the picture before, they get red eye. Uh, small number of them, they even can cause corneal ulcer. I mean, uh, uh, ulceration to the eye, and also it may it may cause blindness as well. Yeah. So Mason is, uh, is uh, for now it's not so common as I mentioned, it's because of the uh, uh, vaccine, okay? But the, as you see in the graph, global incidence has decreased, but it still remains a threat to many parts of the world, okay? There are quite a number of reported uh, measles outbreaks, okay? And, and this outbreak, if you are infected with the measles, of course you can cause substantial cost in of treatment and also not for productivity because the children yeah. can go to school, parents have to take them to, right. to, to hospital to clinic for treatment. Yeah. Doctor, all these uh, worst case scenarios, I, I mean, you can call it that, like, the um, measles related deaths by complications, these uh, are, are these, I mean, if you have had the vaccination, of course, there's no chances of of all these complications at all. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the important point in the vaccination is uh, this my vaccine, which I will talk later, is called mum okay. Right, yeah, okay. The mandatory vaccine. Mandatory mm -hmm. vaccine okay. is why you have to bring to get the vaccine, to get your child vaccinated. So so yeah. one of the reasons why we want to get this uh, mandatory vaccine is because we want to try to eradicate this infection. Right. We want to control, take full control of the infection so that it won't spread. Mm. Uh, so the widespread vaccination, you don't see this infection a lot now. Uh, of course, here and there you get outbreak here and there. Uh, some is because not all patients, not all patients get the uh, get the vaccine. They get hundred percent protection. They are probably a few percent, one or two percent. Their body may right. not develop a good immune response. So they still can down be down with the infection itself, and also certain oh. people the vaccine is not natural. I want to get the natural infection. Uh, this mm. uh, this is the wrong thinking. So it includes someone who have this thinking. They don't bring their child uh, to get vaccinated. Then of course there is always a small chance that you can get infection because this Mrs. Mom Bella is not eradicated. It's not eradicated yet. Not like smallpox, uh, not like smallpox, which has already been eradicated many many years ago. We don't see smallpox any uh, in, in any yeah. in the world now. When you say eradicated, that means the disease is extinct. Um, totally, entirely. Like, yeah, more like this is like polio. Polio. We give an example. Polio. 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 Polio malaitis caused by polio virus. Uh, mm -hmm. They are. We have. Actually, this uh, polio vaccine for many, many years in Malaysia, we are actually already glad, if you read the news, already glad polio free. Uh, mm, okay. Okay. Then suddenly, okay. this outbreak happened in Sabah. So, okay. this polio is, is an import case. So, in I Malaysia, it's very red. So, it's non existent in Malaysia anymore. Right. So, then we have the cases again. You know. So the aim of vaccine is to control the disease, reduce the uh, mortality or the disease caused by the infection. And also, to a certain extent, we would like to eradicate some of the diseases as well. I see. Okay. We go to the next topic, mums. All right. Mums is uh, affect your affect the salivary gland. Okay, the salivary is located each side of the face. Okay, in Chinese, it's called Saixian Dian. Mm. Arthur, transmission yes. the same air airborne through contaminated surface through respiratory droplets. Incubation period about two weeks to about three weeks. Mm. It's, it's contagious as as contagious as influenza or rubella, but it's not as contagious as measles. 
Okay, most uh, it's most contagion one or two days before the onset of symptoms. Okay, a day or two before the symptom is most contagious. Meaning, if a person has really get the infection, mumps, even before the symptom appear, this person actually can spread the infection to other people. Okay, the disease yeah. itself, uh, same thing is not a non-specific symptom like fever, uh, loss of appetite. You can get muscle pain here and there, headache, bit tired. Okay, then the infection will localize. You go to the parotid gland. Parotid gland is your salivary gland. Go to the left to right side. Okay, uh, and also you may go to the genital organ. You go to the urinary tract as well. I see. Is that why? Uh, I mean, there's a common perception that if you get mumps, and uh, mumps usually happens amongst males. No, not necessarily mom. It can happen male or female. Male or female, yeah. But if it happens among, uh, I mean, just perception lah. If it happens yeah. to males, and then there's a chance that they might not be able to bear children in later life. Is uh, that probably a small percentage? Fact? Probably just small percentage of them. Okay, most most of them recover without any 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 issue, without any problem. Let me show you a picture of this uh salivary gland. Salivary gland is the gland that produces the saliva. Okay, mm. so there are three main salivary gland but the biggest one is parotid gland that's why if you if you get uh, someone get uh, mums uh, you go to the parotid gland parotid is the biggest the larger gland then you can see the side of your mouth the side of the face here will be, will yeah. be swollen okay let me show you another picture later okay uh, we talk about the complication first also it can affect much it can affect multi, multi organs like yes. Before you mentioned parotitis. Parotitis is the infection of the mum virus in the parotid gland. Okay, you can go to the testis for male, go to the testis for uh, orchitis. You can also go to the breast, go to the ovaries in female, and it, and, oh. and it can also cause uh, the inflammation in the pancreas called pancreatitis. Of course, a small number of them they get brain infection, okay, meningitis, oh. encephalitis. Can cause brain infection as well. Okay, it's brain complication. Uh, beside that, heart also can get involved. It may affect the hearing, affect the kidney as well. Hmm. Yeah. So if you look at this picture, you see this parotid gland is swollen. So if a child yeah. or a person will get mum's infection, because parotid is at the just at the side of the face, mm -hmm. just below your ear. Okay, so you can see this child on the right side. Swollen, yeah. swollen uh, cheek. Okay, swollen cheek. The jaw swollen, and you, if you press, uh, right. probably the child will start to scream because it's painful. Mm. Does it usually it's... happen on one side only or both sides? Usually, it's one. Generally, it's one. Usually, it's one side, but it can happen both sides also. But usually, it's one side. Okay. Uh, although. Vaccine is, is there, but it still continue to be reported you know, on and off here and there, especially in the Western Pacific region. Uh, as just like just like measles, if mom's outbreak happen, it also can be especially with substantial cost in terms of treatment and also loss of productivity. Yeah. Um okay, next we go to rubella. Okay. But I think we really no rubella especially those pregnant ladies you must get the vaccine for rubella because you do not want your unborn child to get infected okay rubella another name is german measles uh in chinese it's called feng zhen or the Martin. okay it's caused by rubella virus usually okay. generally it causes even in students sometimes it causes a very mild fever a bit of rash but too much but it's severe to yeah. Is severe to a pregnant lady, okay? Uh, transmission is about the same droplet, respiratory droplet, uh, incubation two to three weeks. Mm. So the infectivity or communicability is moderate, okay? okay? It's most contagious when the rash appear, okay? First, the, when, the, when, 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 when the rash appears, it's most contagious, it's, it's the period that is most contagious. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it can be contagious seven days before to seven days after the rash onset. Onset the rash. Okay, generally, uh, the symptom it can be also more specific with fever, cough, flu. Okay, uh, as mentioned before, they get rash. Okay, and they get swollen gland, especially the lymph node gland around the the neck area or the at the back of the of yeah. the head. Okay, uh, adult. Or some 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 lady you can get painful joint aching here and there, but this, this symptoms are not severe. Okay, you take some medication, you take some rest, most of them it just resolves. But as yeah. uh, is most serious in pregnant women, pregnant women, uh, especially during the first trimester, first uh, twenty weeks of the pregnancy, because it can cause this condition called congenital rubella syndrome. Which oh. I'll show you in the picture later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rubella rash. It's mm -hmm. also called three days measles rubella or three days rash. It's because the rash, mm -hmm. for me, the rash appears for about up to about three days. Okay. okay. So the rash looks like a uh, rash, rash on the measles, but sometimes you cannot differentiate uh, the rash between the rubella and measles. Okay. Other features as well. What are the complications? Besides uh, congenital rubella syndrome, okay, joint, as I mentioned before, up to 60% of women they get some joint pain, arthritis, okay, yeah. and also brain infection or inflammation called yeah. encephalitis. Okay, some people their blood count can be very low, okay, and okay. cause problems. Okay, yeah. but the most severe complication is congenital rubella syndrome okay doctor uh sorry can i ask you just now you mentioned that uh rubella is especially dangerous to ladies so does that mean that rubella also happens among men as well yeah you can get an infection but oh but i think it's, so it's not exclusive get, you don't get much you don't get uh, there's no uh, not, not, not only exclusive to, 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 to women only. Okay, it's just women more dangerous. Uh, because it's, it's dangerous to the unborn baby. Okay. Children, boy, boy or girls, women, men, they get the infection. Okay. That's why the immunization for rubella many, many years ago, you still remember maybe uh, when you are still young that time, we only give the rubella vaccine to yeah. women only. To, to yes. girls, but mm. since uh, uh, since uh, Malaysia has this national immunization program, MMR vaccine has been made mandatory. Uh, Mrs. Oh, Mom, okay, MMR vaccine, Mrs. Mom rubella. So rubella is part of the MMR vaccine. So it has been made uh, mandatory. So all children, no matter boys or girls, they all yes. get the vaccine. So we want to protect all. We not not only want to protect the girls. We want to protect all. Otherwise, the girls. Get protected, boys don't get protected, boys get the infection. So, mm. so, so you should protect all. So the because the, boys the infection to the girls, is that what you say? It's right, yeah. uh, it is infectious in that way it's contagious because if you don't vaccinate the boys, they will get the disease and yeah, yeah, they will yeah, they can, they can, yeah, they respect to others as well. Mm. So so it's a mandatory vaccine, so everybody get the vaccine. Uh, after 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 nine months or one year old. Yeah, and the picture that you showed just now, the three-day rash, that one yes. is for those who have not uh, received the rubella vaccination. Uh, if you don't get vaccinated, then they get rubella infection. This this is the rash that you, you, you can see. Yeah, but what happens after three days? And this is it disappear. Up to about oh. three days. Very short, like this one, yeah. called three-day rash. Yeah, the, the rash will disappear, but the disease, does it progress? Sorry again. The rash will disappear after three days, but the disease itself, because the, the, the virus, virus. like 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 the, the joint pain, it may take it may take a couple of days or weeks. Uh, mm. But if the mother pregnant lady get the infection during pregnancy, uh, it will wait until the pregnancy until when when the baby is born. Then you can see the baby has uh, all the features of uh, congenital rubella syndrome. Okay. The virus stay in the body, uh, cause because the early stage of the pregnancy, uh, it affect a lot of this organ during the organ formation. So it cause a lot of uh, uh, 
defect or this okay. thing later on. Yeah. Just so I can clarify, uh, okay, you mean let, let's say let's say a girl has not had a rubella vaccination, so she contracts rubella and then she grows and becomes a woman who gets pregnant, and then only you will see the result when she delivers the baby who has uh, oh this problem. Um, if, if she has the infection, okay, if, if a girl has the vaccine taken before, of course she's protected. Okay, if of course, you don't yeah. have the vaccine, you, know, you don't take the vaccine, you're exposed. Let's say the girl has contracted rubella infection, she recovered. Okay, she recovered. She recovered, she will have the antibody in the body. So probably she won't get infection anymore, even though she's exposed yeah. to rubella yeah. virus. But the right. problem is if this girl, as a young girl, she never get never get vaccinated. Okay. Mm. And she never get natural infection, natural rubella infection. And mm. she get pregnant. Okay. Mm. But when she gets pregnant, during the early stage, the first trimester, okay, mm. unfortunately, she gets infection from someone. Okay. From some other children. Okay. okay. So the virus infect this lady during the early stage of pregnancy. That is the most serious problem that mm. will cause this neonatal rubella syndrome. So it's infection during pregnancy. So that's why we need to get vaccine, we need to prevent infection before it happens. Okay, and this congenital rubella syndrome, uh, I'm not sure whether you explained it just now. Yeah, I, I think I have, oh, I, 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 have this. I have the picture. Oh, okay, all right. Birth defects, lah. It's a birth defect, it's a birth defect. Lifelong birth defect. Oh, there you go. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, it's an illness in infant that results from mother's infection with rubella virus mm. during pregnancy, especially during early pregnancy. Okay, they are they are the classical signs. What what mm. what are the important features? Okay, first, the ear hearing loss, deafness, mm. to almost 60 percent. Yeah. Eye problem, they get cataract, they get probably the eye vision, glaucoma, yeah. blindness, up to 43%. Another one is heart, the heart get, uh, the heart get affected. Uh, the most common one is called PDA or patent ductus arteriosa, up to 50%. Okay, these yeah. are the, the important sign or we call a triad, the classical features. Besides that, yeah. if you look at a baby who is born, they are very small, they, are low, they have low birth weight, probably two kilo or even less than two kilo, they get big liver, big split, which is, we can uh, which which is uh, which which is damaged okay not functioning well and also they get this so-called blueberry muffin rash it's a typical rash uh, mm. in uh, the rubella syndrome of course in the long run in the long term their mm. growth are affected and they retarded so the disability is lifelong so the mm. cost for you know to, for treatment is yeah. is, is substantial Okay. Yes. Uh, because they need they need a special school. They probably need uh, lifelong care. So this uh, can cause a uh, potential uh, problem to the family as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the next slide I can show you the, the pictures. Yes. Uh, this is on the left on your left hand side. This is cataract. Cataract. So cataract not only happen in adult. Okay. Uh, not only happen in people with. Uh, diabetes okay it can happen mm. in children we can also see in children uh, especially uh, those children born uh, with this congenital okay. rubella syndrome okay, on the mm. right side the photo show you the typical rash Lo looks like the color looks like a blueberry muffin so we call it a blueberry muffin rash okay mm. this child is really ill in, in, in the intensive care require uh, supportive or ventilatory treatment. Okay, these are the features of um, congenital rubella syndrome. But at this point, the mother is okay. I mean, she is the one who's carrying the, the virus, but... Yeah, uh, the virus comes to the baby. Then it, the, yeah, the, the virus... The baby, and the, yeah, and the baby it's develops all the, so, so, so baby develops all this. In fact, almost a lot of organ in the body also can be affected, but these are the main one. But okay. most, but most uh, serious is is probably the lifelong care you need to take, you know, the intellectual yeah. impairment, uh, yeah. special care they need. They, they, they need a life. Yeah. 
While the baby has uh, all this, uh, the mother is fine already like, at this point. I mean, she's carrying the virus, but, My but the virus... Is not, yeah, just like you get the, the rubella before pregnancy, just some fever cough, a bit of rash, a bit swollen, swollen gland, you probably recover, but to the baby, it's, it's, baby, it's a big yeah. problem. I see. Okay. All right. Ah, so the last one, chicken pox. I know everybody. Mm. I think everybody knows about chicken pox. Probably most of us had chicken pox infection before. Yes. China I in Bahasa, uh, in Chinese, it's called sui to. So it's highly, highly infectious, caused by varicella zoster virus. Transmission, transmission, uh, uh, also by droplet aerosols from the nose, from the throat. Mm. And also because chicken pox typically they have this. Skin lesion, rash with vesicle okay. because they yeah. sleep. So, this also is infectious, okay? So, incubation period is up to about two to three weeks, up to about 21, 21 days. Uh, mm. It's highly comfortable. Uh, most children below six years of age, they get infected. Most, okay? If you don't get the chicken pox vaccine, you may get a high chance you get infection if you are exposed, okay? Mm. Uh, so the typical no, no. typical features is fever, mm. okay, and then followed by itchy rash, then followed by articles. Okay. okay. So the, the, the other feature is not specific like fever, headache, loss of appetite, feel mm. tired, is is quite uh specific. But can I show the next slide the the features? Uh, ah, this is the typical about rash. I think if uh, to a uh, layman, layman also you can sometimes you look at this right, you know this is chicken pox. Okay. Yeah. There are red dog. Okay. Some areas has vesicles. If this vesicle yeah. get burnt, then you there it contains some fluid. Okay. And then there are different different stages. Some are new. Some with vesicles with fluid. Some are already dry up. It's called scab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some are dry mm -hmm. up. So you can see yeah. in the in the, in the, in the Person who has chicken pox infection, sometimes you can see different different stages of the rash. Okay, but but it may take the rash. It may take quite some time. It can be up to two weeks to get fully resolved. Mm. Mm. I would like to show this slide because this is one of the complication from chicken pox infection. It's called shingles. Okay. Mm. The, the medical term is called zoster, herpes zoster. Uh, in Malay, it's called kayak. Okay, this, yeah. this is the uh, same virus, chickenpox virus, who has infected this person before, but this person recovered. But this virus is still remain in the body. Okay, it still remain in the body. It hide inside the nerve cells. Okay, so after many, many, many years later, okay, when you grow older, when the immune system are down, then this virus gets active again. Then it causes this rash on certain part of the body. Okay. Mm. Uh, most uh, important feature of this rash is it is very, very painful. Very painful. Sometimes the pain can last for not days, it can last for even months or even years. So it's very painful. I... So to prevent these shingles, what you want to do is how you prevent chicken pox infection. So if you prevent to prevent chicken pox infection, of course you get vaccinated. You don't get chicken pox, you don't get shingles. Okay, so vaccine uh, still is, is still recommended to to take to prevent chicken pox and later on shingles infection. Okay, doctor, uh, the chicken pox yeah. vaccine that is actually the newest lah compared to the other three, right? Because before, uh, I no, mean, I remember. Three... Pox, right? Sorry. Never it about the chicken pox. Is the latest vaccine that has joined no, the compulsory vaccination? Uh, it's not compulsory vaccine. They find some people or most people don't get the vaccine. So the compulsory vaccine is mumps, measles, rubella, MMR. It's compulsory. Uh, hmm. And we have this separate chicken pox vaccine alone. Oh, okay. So okay. Chicken pox vaccine is not compulsory, or, 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 although it's recommended, but it's not compulsory, so a lot of people don't take. Okay, so they get actual infection, they get infection or what they don't get. Uh, 
they don't they, they get natural infection they don't get the second or third time so either you get vaccine or get infected okay but now we have this combination vaccine which i will talk later mmr mm. four in one is much more convenient four in one vaccine if you can okay. one shot you can prevent four type of infection four type of severe infection so so chicken pot vaccine has been there for many many years mmr also many many years but now mm. we have this vaccine so it's more convenient for, for for all okay uh this chicken pox vaccine uh if you are an adult can you still get it that means if you have not had chicken pox before you can, you can still get it in fact it's recommended for adult as well because oh i see chicken pox in, in 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 the childhood chicken pox okay if the child is not too young uh, they don't have problem with their immune system, they are healthy, healthy person. Uh, chicken pox in children generally are self-limited, self-limiting. Mm. I mean, you don't treat, okay, you need to give some few medication to let the child get feel, yeah. feel, more, feel more comfortable, but you, you don't get, you don't give a specific treatment to the chicken pox, okay? But most of the time, yeah. they recover without any, without any problem, most of the time. Okay, okay. but if let's say the child, as a, as a childhood, you don't get, Chicken pox. Mm. Uh, when you go to school, you, you are going to take an important exam. You get chicken pox. Difficult because you cannot go to school for yeah. one whole week. Okay, or yes. as an adult, if you as an adult, you, you don't have chicken pox as both, you don't have chicken pox infection before. You get chicken pox as an adult. The adult has more complication. Okay, you can get lung infection, you can get brain, brain oh. infection. The adult has more complications. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, maybe we can just go through this list first before uh, I... Uh, the other, other uh, complication, uh, mm. the most skin infection, bacteria infection, because the, the chicken pox uh, virus cause, causing the rash, the rash get vesicles, the vesicle get ruptured, skin get, can get infection, bacteria infection, okay? Mm. Mentioned it can cause lung infection, it may also cause brain infection. Okay, uh, very common actually in children, they get stomach pain, abdominal pain, their liver get, it, get involved, hepatitis. It can yeah. also uh, add the heart as well. Okay, uh, some of them joint pain, kidney problem. Uh, another is also uh, during pregnancy, congenital varicella syndrome. Okay, just mm. like uh, you know, rubella, rubella syndrome, they get congenital yeah. varicella syndrome if the pregnant lady is affected uh, with chicken pox early in the pregnancy. So uh, as I mentioned, the most common complications are bacteria infection in children, skin, bacteria skin infection, okay, skin infection and lung infection in adult. Okay. Doctor, let's say someone uh someone has had uh, yes. chicken pox and then is it possible for that person to get chicken pox again? The second time. Second time? Yeah. Uh, generally, is it possible? I mean, if that person has not had uh, that uh, condition. Generally, you get once in, once in your lifetime. Generally, you get once in your lifetime. Generally, you get once in your lifetime. Unless your immune system doesn't work so well. Mm, okay. Uh, in fact, chicken pox, you get chicken pox, your body has produced the antibody. Uh, the antibody is long lasting, long lasting. The second time, the third time, the fourth time, when you're exposed to the same chicken pox virus again, your body has really has antibody. So, so you generally you don't get unless you are your immune system is no good, you are taking some medication yes. that can uh, bring down your immune system, you don't get a good immune response. So then okay. it's possible you can get the second time, but that is very rare. Generally, it's only one, only once. Same, right. same principle. The principle is the same for vaccine. Mm. So we give the vaccine, we give the Okay, then the body develops the antibody. The antibody also is probably not for many, many, many years. So you shouldn't get the infection, you get the vaccine, or you get a natural infection by yourself. I see. Okay, as I did okay. this, this slide show is still a global disease, but it's not a chicken pox, a global disease affecting at least 30 in 1,000 children. 30 in 1,000 children and adults is about 1.3 per 100, is about 1%. 1% is still quite, quite common. Yeah. So it also cost some the cost of treatment. The patient the parents have to bring them to to to, to clinic to hospital. So also can affect their yeah. goods as mm -hmm. well. Okay. 
Doctor, it seems the, uh, it seems like Southeast Asia, from all the slides that we've seen earlier, uh, it does look like yes. Malaysia, Southeast Asia, specifically Malaysia, is in a safe zone. Would you say that? Uh, yeah, on this, on this, yeah, yes. Yeah. No, from all yeah, the Malaysia. from the maps that you showed just now, right? For uh, Maricela, then Rubella, and the, the other two as well. Uh -huh. So it just look like um, Southeast Asia, particularly Malaysia. It looks uh, quite yeah. safe from from the maps that quite you showed safe. just now. It doesn't look like it's one of a uh, one of the places that has very high incidences of these cases. Yeah, because chicken pox, uh, uh, it's not a routine vaccine, it's not mandatory in, in Malaysia. So we still don't see cases here and there, it happened. Yeah, yeah, it's not like me. Because nowadays, you don't see very much. Uh, Rubella, mom, you don't see very much because you got the vaccination mm. coverage. According to, to yeah. a certain part of the world, if you look at uh, some of the Western Western countries, uh, like UK, they are, they are, they are, they, they still have measles cases. You are surprised mm -hmm. they still have measles MMR vaccine also is a routine uh, mandatory vaccine. But because of this, uh, this, this group of people, they don't believe in vaccine, the anti vaxxers yeah. So that was yeah. uh, a time that, you know, a lot of people, that was many, many years ago, uh, there was a time that people all scared about and the, the association of this MMR vaccine uh, mm. with Autism. Okay, so oh, yeah. get scared. Yeah. Mm. Then, then, then a lot of people don't get vaccinated. Then you can see the the cases of Mrs. Uh, Mum who got the case. Uh, mm. get control for some time. I think because of this uh, fear, then the yeah. cases have gone up again. Okay. okay. Oh, what does it look like now? Is it are we plagued by this problem? Or does it seem like our society is more well first? Or vaccine refu refusal uh, is still a problem in our society. Some oh. parents they, they they opt not to take the vaccine because they thought uh, uh, everything needs to be uh, by their nature. You, you, mm. They probably prefer to get the infection than to get the vaccine. Uh, I I think this is not right. This is not true. Okay, mm. you must remember uh, this this. These are so called vaccine preventable disease. Vaccine mm. preventable disease means all these all these diseases. They are experts, they are scientists, they are people spend a lot of time, spend a lot of money to develop the vaccine, okay, to protect all of us. Okay. Right. Your body, yes, your body may produce uh, adequate antibody to fight infection. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for example, you can pop, you don't take any treatment, your body uh can overcome the infection. But mm. they are some people, their immune system is not so good. Okay, or mm. they are extreme of age, old people, uh, yeah. young children, their immune system are not so developed. So if you expose them to these viruses, they get the infection, they get mm. severe complications, then it's fatal. Yes. That's why uh, vaccine is developed to prevent all these severe infection or severe complications from the infection itself. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's not just about you, it's about other people as well. Yes, yes, you need to protect yourself, you need to protect the people around you as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we go to another topic, it's a little bit about vaccine. Okay, vaccine is right. an antigen. Okay, vaccine is an antigen, it's a kill virus, weakened virus or kill virus or bacteria, which mm. introduced into the into a healthy person, okay, for the purpose of creating your own protection, you want to create your own antibodies, okay? It works by causing the body to produce its own protection, meaning antibody against infectious diseases caused by certain viruses or bacteria, okay? Uh, there are, there are, actually, there are no specific treatment for measles, mumps, rubella. Okay? These are viruses, okay? Uh, we, we, we don't give antibiotics for this virus. Okay. And a lot of this antivirus also is not effective for this uh, uh, viral infection. And yeah. most of the time, if a healthy person gets this infection, okay, if you don't get the complication, you recover by yourself. That's why it's called self-limiting. Uh, sometimes it's just self-limiting. Okay. 
Yeah. But they are preventable by vaccine. As I mentioned before, it's vaccine. Uh, it's a vaccine preventable diseases. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we go specifically to the vaccine, MMR vaccine, Mrs. Mumps rubella vaccine. Okay. Uh, it con uh, consists of two doses. MMR vaccine consists of two doses uh, as given as part of our national immunization program. Meaning uh, the Malaysia government or Ministry of Health make sure this vaccine is available and is compulsory to all children. Okay, to all children. Okay. Yeah. The first dose, previously the first dose was given at the age of 12 months old, one year old. Then followed by second dose at about the first uh, school entry at six to seven year old. But yeah. since a uh, few years ago, since 2016, these two uh, doses has been brought forward to become nine months to twelve months. That means uh, at nine months, your child is at nine months old. You need to bring to get the first shot of the MR vaccine. Okay, then it only three months later at twelve months, then they get the second dose of MR vaccine, then complete okay. two, two, two injections. Okay. Of course, there are common injection holding vaccine. Okay, pain over the injection site, a little bit swelling, uh, weakness. Yeah. Uh, these are common is is you do not need, need any specific treatment, usually it lasts maybe a day or two, a couple of days, then you get resolved. Okay. Other side effects like rash is common after the vaccine. Okay, uh, mouth 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 fever, a little bit swollen, uh, gland, limb nodes, uh, and also joint pain. These, these are transient, okay? You, you, you don't treat okay. if it, it's some painkillers, uh, the pain will, the fever and pain will just go just go off okay but uh, in a very rare cases uh, some children get high fever about one week after the vaccine okay this can happen uh, but it's quite bad okay it, then because of fever the causing the child to get febrile uh, fever or febrile fever this is very rare right. okay, this is due to the complication or the side effect of the vaccine itself but generally the vaccine is very very safe okay very safe and millions of millions of vaccine has been given throughout the world Okay, yeah. there's no uh, uh, major side effect uh, uh, which uh, can be dangerous to the to your health. Okay, uh, yeah. except uh, the so-called autism association also it, it has been proved that it's not true. So it's not true, mm. true at all. Okay. Okay. There's no association between MMR vaccine and, and autism at all. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Next will be MMRV vaccine. Okay, this mm. one uh, Sakino was about chickenpox and MMR. Two so chickenpox separate vaccine, MMR second separate vaccine. Now we have mm. this all in one, four, four in one mm. yeah. MMRV vaccine. Also, so it protect measles, mumps, rubella, plus varicella or chickenpox. So this vaccine is indicated for uh, to prevent this infection from one year old to twelve years old. So the license of the vaccine for this age group only. So it's a little bit different from MMR, okay, MMR vaccine. So what are the schedule, the vaccine schedule? You want to take MMR, you want to take chicken pox, or you want to take MMRV? Mm. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned before, MMR can be given if you follow the, the National Immunization Program, or Ministry of Health uh, Program, okay? The first MMR is at nine months old. They follow by second dose at 12 months. Then you finish. With the MMR compulsory vaccine, okay. But mm -hmm. if you want to give chicken pox, you can give at a later date. The earliest chicken pox is at one year old or twelve months, followed by second okay. dose three months later at fifteen months. So if you do not give, you don't want to give so early. You take MMR mm -hmm. at nine months, so when finish, chicken pox can be given at thirteen months, fourteen months, fifteen months, doesn't matter. And so right. as uh, one year old, but of course, then yeah. you have to take two vaccines: MMR one, chicken pox one, okay. But you can combine together. Okay, so if you have taken MMR vaccine at nine months, you follow our national immunization program. At one year old, if you're taking MMR at one year old, you can take an MRV at one year old, at 12 months. So this is a combination vaccine. Okay, since yeah. you already taken two doses of MMR at nine months and 12 months, but you have just taken the chicken pox for first dose at one year old, you can get another mm -hmm. chicken pox. Three months later. So in, yeah. instead yeah. of two MMR and two chicken pox, four injections now become three because you combine yeah. the two vaccines. You combine the right. MMR with one year old. Another option is 
you straight away go for MMRV at one year old. Okay, okay. for in at 12 months old, take the second dose at 15 months. Okay, then you complete two doses, only two deaths, only two injections. But uh, because the national emergency program require us to bring our children to go to get vaccinated against MMR at nine months old. So generally, uh, you still follow the schedule, okay? You still follow, you give at nine months old, subsequently we give MMRV chicken uh, mm. Unless uh, this particular child is really late for vaccine. You see, they never come mm. for vaccine. Uh, yeah. Compared to us, it's already 13 months, for example. 13 months. Right. 13 months, you can actually take the chicken pox. Then you myself give 13 months MMRV one dose. And then three months later, 15 months, give the second dose finish. So these are the, the options, the combination option of the vaccine. Okay. MMRV vaccine you can, that you can consider. Right. And we have, okay, this yeah, is this a summary. Right. So, okay. uh, as a conclusion, Mrs. Mouse, Rubella, chicken pox are uh, all highly infectious disease. Okay, it, it happens yeah. everywhere. Okay, it can affect all age groups and male, female, especially children. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. most important is their complication. Okay, so although progress has been made in tackling these childhood diseases, it's not only childhood, it's actually in adult yeah. as well. Continue to occur, so therefore we need to highlight the return needs for preventive effort. So what are the preventive effort? Okay, one of the important preventive effort is by vaccination. Okay, beside your hygiene, you don't get into contact with uh, other people who are sick. You, know, you wash your yeah. hands, cover uh, your mouth when you sneeze. Don't have personal hygiene. But another important aspect is I want to stress again and again is uh, by vaccination. So get the vaccination. Okay. On time, get the vaccination as scheduled. Okay. Okay, but doctor, we've got three questions from our viewers. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's take the first question from Mr. Andy Mervin George. Hi, Doctor Hugh. My three-year-old girl had three days high fever at thirty-nine degrees Celsius. Saw the pediatrician and gave a very paracetamol for oral mm -hmm. and inhaled. Her fever mm -hmm. subsided on the fourth day and rashes developed whole body but not itchy or protruding. What do you think is the cause of this fever? We haven't done blood tests yet as fever subsided. You treated my daughter Abigail before at your clinic. Oh, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if, if you get fever for about a few days and then get some rashes, once the rash appears, okay, your fever is subsided. Okay, it's different from the, uh, the infection I, I talked before. You get fever, you get rash, you know, chicken pot, you get uh vesicles coming out at the same time okay, this, this, this particular uh, uh case uh, the presentation is high fever fever for about three days okay but the one the child is okay not too bad okay and then after about three four days the fever suddenly subside then you start to get this kind of rash okay and then the child is the child is almost back to normal you can eat well can play active so this is just a common virus it's not the infection that I mentioned, the three infections that I mentioned before, the four infections that I mentioned before. Uh, one okay. of the possible things is called Roseola. Roseola effect is another type of viral infection which is also it's a self-limiting, no treatment with it except to give some paracetamol to control the fever. Okay. But okay. once the child recover, uh, they will recover fully, full recovery, without any, uh, I mean for this particular case, without any uh, uh, side effect or without any complication, you make full recovery. Okay. Uh, doctor, there's a, uh, sorry, you are done with, a, with uh, answering Mr. Andy Melvin George just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question, okay, all right, we'll take another question. This is from Encik Zai. Uh, he's, he's got two questions. I think the second one we already addressed just now, your view on uh, anti-vaccination group. That one we spoke already about that. Yes. And so number one, number one, his question is quite interesting because it's about the difference between MMR by government and private hospital. Is there any difference? Same thing. The vaccine we use the same. Probably the, the brand is different, but it's still mm -hmm. MMR vaccine. So the in the market, there are, two, there are two different brands. Okay, I, I think it's brand A or brand B. Maybe the government has clinic use, use mm -hmm. brand A, uh, then mm -hmm. use brand B. 
Okay. Yeah. But uh, if you take the first dose in government clinic, okay, mm. uh, I generally you try to follow. If you know you are coming from the government, you try to follow the same brand. Two, two, mm. two, 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 two. But it's the same. It's the same. Website. It cover MMR. Uh, cover okay. all the three protection. Same. Okay. So all right. Side effect: the pain, the fever. Side effect: same. Okay. Um, from Mr. Tan Jit Ken, there are so many vaccines to take. Is there any way we can get all the shots without making so many trips to the clinic or the hospital? Uh, okay, there are actually the vaccine are not too many. There are many, but not not, it's not so many that you, you you have to get you to take all the vaccine at different different times. You see, mm. to, to minimize your visit or to minimize the time spent to bring your child out to the hospital or to minimize the mm. contact. Uh, in, the, yeah. in the outside or advice uh, in the hospital, okay. What you can do is you group the vaccine together. You group it together. Mm. Meaning, for example, you can group the vaccine at two months old. You can group the vaccine, the mandatory vaccine, the six, six in one vaccine. Okay, six in one vaccine, you can group together with pneumococcus. You can group together with uh, Rota virus. So you give three vaccines on the same thing. Two shot and then one oral, finish. And then after that, you come back after two months. Finish. No need to yeah. come back one month later. Uh, and then every month come back. You don't need. And also the other, the other, if you try to give combination vaccine, just now as I mentioned, six in one vaccine, five in one vaccine, a combination vaccine. Okay. So if if you give six in one vaccine, it's a combination of vaccine. It's a combination of five in one plus a hepatitis B vaccine. So you actually you save one visit for the hepatitis B vaccine. Okay, if you go to uh, the government clinic in Satan, you need to yeah. bring the child at one month old to get the hep B, hepatitis B shot, then two months for one. So if you take six in one vaccine, you do not need to make two visits. The two shots you combine into six in one vaccine, then you give them, you just give one shot at one and a half month to two months. But of course, six in one vaccine is not available in the, in the government clinic. So it's only available in private um, private clinic or private hospital. Uh, so it's, okay. it's, 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 uh, we encourage or we advise uh, to take the combination vaccine and mm. to take those vaccines at the same visit. So this can reduce the number of visits, you reduce your time, you reduce the pain to your children. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Doctor, we've got one last question here to address because uh, that, that's all the, the time that we have. Hi, Dr. Hugh, this is from Ms. Sarah Lim. During this COVID-19 season, can I postpone uh, the vaccination? If yes, how long can I postpone it? In fact, COVID-19 COVID pandemic, we, nobody expected it. <laughs> okay, and how long it lasts, nobody knows. Okay, if you mm. look at our, 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 our numbers you know, of infected people, uh, it may get less and less uh, day one single digit, double digit, but it may spike up again. Uh, yeah. This is the cluster or, or how we are there. Okay, so vaccination is a totally different, uh, different issues at, at all. Okay, so you need to take care of yourself, you need to look after yourself, uh, take care of hygiene. Prevent infection, prevent COVID infection. Okay, but at the same time, don't forget. Uh, that I mentioned earlier, dengue. People talk about COVID. Probably they forget about dengue. It's coming back. Okay, so this uh childhood infection is still there all the time. Still there all the time. So yeah. I would uh, advise uh, you just follow the, the vaccine schedule as what is supposed to be. Okay, don't delay the vaccine, especially for those. Uh, we call a primary vaccination the first, the first, uh, within the first year, the vaccine within the first year, okay? Because your the children are not having exposure to this, uh, they never exposed or never get this vaccine before. They have no protection yeah. at all. In case uh, one or two case, uh, one or two child has this this uh, infection, carry on this mm. infection, your child get infected, then it, it can become a uh, will. Okay. Yeah. So so try to follow the schedule as far as possible. Try to follow. Okay. How long to delay? Uh, there's no answer. You, you shouldn't delay at all. Okay. But of okay. course, to a certain vaccine, certain vaccine you have basically already completed the three doses. 
Uh, for example, the sky you already completed three doses before one year old. You already get you're already protected. Now you your child is one and a half year old, you want to come for the booster dose of five even vaccine. Then you, you do not want to come now. Probably you want to delay a month or two, actually it doesn't matter because this is a booster dose. Your child has yeah. your child's body has already uh, has this protection from the previous vaccine. Okay. This one you yes. want to wait for the pandemic to or get over maybe end of the year uh, it's okay as long as not too delayed once you are ready once you think the situation now then you just come to get the vaccine but definitely not for those uh, primary vaccines which are uh, taken at one year old before one year old. okay thank you very much doctor that was very very informative we hope all uh ladies and gentlemen you have had uh, you have your questions answered and if you've got any more questions of course you can always uh type in the comment section and we will uh, get Dr. Hugh to get back to you with answers. Um, as for now, that's uh, we have to wrap up and I'd like to say thank you so much on behalf of Columbia Asia <laughs> to Dr. Hugh Kofan, consultant pediatrician from Columbia Asia Hospital Sheras with our topic about the common childhood infectious diseases. Thank you so much everyone and hopefully we will see you again. Thank you, thank you everyone. Okay, have a nice day.